you survived another week. Thank you for listening, downloading, and subscribing to the Black Man with a Gun Show. This is episode 344. Warm and fuzzy. This week, Doc David interviews Gail Pepin and Ashley Gibbons while attending the MAG 120 class somewhere in Indiana. I got a hunter tip for the hunters and a shout out from DCCoverSense.com. Also, Barbara Baird of Women's Outdoor News.com talks about hand me downs. This episode is going to be comfortable, reassuring, friendly, and affectionate. Because friends like you are the bacon bits in the salad bowl of life. Pay attention to me, boy. I'm not just talking to hear my head roar. This show is just for the cool people in the gun community. My name is Ken Blanchard, and I talk about and to newsmakers, producers, and things that matter to you. Life, freedom, and gun rights. I know what you're going through. I'm your friend and brother from another mother, known around the world as the black man with a gun. And this is what cool sounds like. Welcome to the Black Man with a Gun Show. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, what a week, what a week. How are you today? You hanging in there? You survived the government shutdown? Man, that was nuts, wasn't it? It was cool for a couple of days, but after two weeks, uh, folks are starting to get a little crazy. Yeah, they were. You know, the leaves are changing. And uh, here in the mid-Atlantic part of North America, and it is straight up beautiful. You can hear the crickets almost all day going for it. The Blue Jays are my favorite, are screaming. Congrats to Mary and John, whom I had the privilege of officiating at their wedding last Saturday. It's been a heck of a week, hasn't it? This week, got uh, a friend I've only met on Facebook. He went to a MAG 120 class and interviewed the president and owner or general manager of a range out in Indiana. Yeah, he did. Thank you so much there, Dr. Dave. And thank you. I look forward to this part of the week. I get a chance to talk to 80,000 of my closest friends. Hey, Brian, Leroy, Talon, Gene, Michael, Allen, Tat, Greg, Rob, Chris, Malcolm, Scott, Robert, Tony, Lou, Vince, Sherry, Maya, Sarah, Barbara, Reese, Steve, Ray, Ken, Varnell, Eric, Todd, Derek, Marty, Miguel, Gail, Moss, Liston, Doc, Chuck, Carl, Andy, Julius, Jeremy, Jennifer, Reggie, Patrick, William, Keith, Amir, Rudy, Frank, David, Pam, Larry, and Phil, and you. Yeah, thank you. This show, I'm not trying to show you how much I know. This show actually is not about me at all. It's just a podcast for the like-minded, fun-loving people that care about their freedom, America, their communities, family, and each other. I'm your friend and brother from another mother, known around the world as the black man with a gun. This week, we're going to get some hunting tips from our friend Herschel of DCCoverScent.com. Also, a shout out to Jim Heffelfinger, author of The Deer of the Southwest. You can find out about that at DeerNet.com. Thank you, Jim, for that um, that post, man. You sent out a really good note. And I started GunRightsMaryland.com this week. And all I want to do with that site is just for right now, just gather um, names and numbers. I know the NRA has the numbers already because they, they keep all their stuff close. Um, there's a couple of gun rights groups in Maryland. They probably have some names and numbers too. I want a whole nother list so I can show our political leadership, no matter which party, that we have a voice and a vote in this state, and that we support the officials that support the Second Amendment. I want to try a different route and get some people that maybe you're on the other list. I want you on this one too. Other groups have their missions and goals. This is a grassroots effort. I'm trying to help all Marylanders who support and don't support the Second Amendment to get together 
And I'm trying to speak with thousands of organized votes at election time. GunRightsMaryland.com. If you live in the state of Maryland, please go there and sign up. That's all I'm asking for right now. If you have money to donate, that's cool too. But really, just looking for the, the data. Trying to build a list. If you could. Thanks. All right, what we got first? First, let's go to Herschel. It's hunting season and Herschel has got a tip. So we're going back to the woods of Alabama. Brother Herschel from D.C. Cover Scent, as Deep Creek Cover Scent. Welcome back to the show. Hey, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. I mean, how about a hunter tip for this week? Uh, my hunter tip for this week, as we get ready to go, most people season is either opening or just open. One of my biggest safety tips would be if you if you leave if you leave the ground, be attached to the tree. <laughs> Be attached to it at all times as you're on your way up that tree and as you're on that way down that tree. There are a ton of companies that make hunter's best uh, protection rigs for you out here. There are a ton of them. Please make sure you just stay tied to the tree as you go up and down it. Uh, walk safely. You know, pick your feet up, put your feet down, watch where you're walking, but definitely just be be safe on those trees. So a lot of people fall out of the trees every year so much so that here in Alabama, they have just categorized it as a separate class of report industries. Um, uh, when, when, when the game warden is called out to, to investigate a report of, of a hunter being injured, a lot of hundred hunters get injured just trying to climb a tree and they were trying to um, climb off of a tree. So please just stay just stay tied to the tree, you know, up, up, up the tree and down the tree. Wow, whole whole section by itself, just falling out of trees. Oh man, yeah, we have a whole class because I took my son; they had to do a hunter safety class here, and the game warden was 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 uh, telling us that a lot of the reports of hunters who have been injured just shot up so much that they had to create a whole class just for the incident reports of hunters falling off a tree. I've had one of my relatives, it, it happened to him. You know, you can lose if you have a two-piece climber, and as you're climbing up, as you're trying to ascend up this tree, if your bottom part of your climber is not attached to your top part, if the bottom part falls off, you're going to fall out. And it has happened. Uh, it has happened to me. I've climbed up a tree, and I've climbed for quite a few years, and I, you know, but I keep my bottom part of my climber attached to the top part uh, by a cord, and it fell off. And I was just dangling. You have to try to reach down with your foot or your hand uh, and bring it back up and attach it to a tree. So it gets kind of hairy being, and we get up off the ground sometimes fit, anywhere from 15 to 20, 25 feet off the ground. So if you fall, you're going to hurt yourself. Um, really, somebody's going to come pick you up. Somebody will come pick you up because you will not be able to hit that ground and walk and shake that off. A lot wow. of people do lose their lives every year. A lot of people get maimed very badly uh, not being, not taking tree safety and just taking personal safety and putting it at the very forefront of their mind. Some people just be so excited to get out to the woods that just really good common sense kind of flies out the window. They leave it in the truck and it needs to be brought with you in and out of the woods. Everything from like I said, staying safe to the tree stand and being safe walking in and out of the woods. And you have to be very, very careful because you can't hurt yourself out there. So that would be my one tip is to please, if you climb a tree, your family would appreciate it to be able to see you in the evening the same way they saw you in the morning when you left the house or if you went to camp. When you get back, they would appreciate you seeing you holding in one piece and not have to visit you at their nearest hospital. So just stay attached to a tree going up. And coming down, make sure you check your equipment before you put it on the tree. Make sure it's good. And then on no tears, no rips. Um, then, like I said, there are too many, too many hunter products on the market that make hunter systems for you not to invest in one. So before you pick a good rifle or your best bow or brand new arrows or shafts or hats or apparel, make sure you spend good time researching your your safety vest uh, for yourself to make sure that you find the right one that's fitted for your weight, your height, your class, um, and that is approved uh, for you to be able to use and um, just stay safe out there in the woods. And what's your website again, man? One more time. Uh, it's 
dot com. Thanks, Herschel. Thank you so very much. All right. I'm going to try to do a little bit of hunting stuff for the next couple of weeks, or at least until you bag your first one. Got to love the hunters, man. You guys holding it down for family and tradition for years, and nobody gives you your props. Well, you're going to get them here. Crossbreedholsters.com. Often imitated, never duplicated, handcrafted in the USA. Home of the lifetime warranty and a tried free guarantee. Crossbreedholsters.com. And please, please, please support Crossbreed Holsters because they've been supporting this brother for going on three or four years now. You know, this is like a really nice nip in the air. It's kind of cool, kind of a good time for some soup. So let me go upstairs and make you some mulligan soup. How about that? All right, let's see. Let's mix some mulligan stew. Who in the heck is mulligan anyway? I thought we used to call this stuff hobo stew. Yeah, let's see. I need me some celery, some carrots, give me a small little Vandalia onion, got some butter, refrigerator, we got it. Oh yeah, we got that. Do I have a, um... oh yeah, we got some old rotisserie chicken in here, that's going in there. Some bacon. My son didn't eat all of it from yesterday. Spices. I got, uh, um, yep, we got oregano, we got basil, we got some, uh, and what else we got in here? Sea salt. Hey, let's try that. Pepper, salt, yep, we got that. Ah, we got some rice. We're gonna throw that in there. What else we need? I need some. Ah, we got any potatoes down this big boy? Ah, here we go. That's what I'm talking about. Throw that in there and let's see. I think we good. Yeah. I'll put all this stuff together. Because everybody's not feeling too good. I'm just going to keep on doing this until, until uh, we'll come back in a minute and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, well, I'm up there making you some stew. Let's go to Barbara. Hey, black man with a gun. Mothers and daughters often swap clothes, share clothes, shoes, purses. But what about mothers and sons, women and husbands? Women and their fathers-in-law. Thanks to the men in my life and their cast-offs, I have received some items that I would really miss if I didn't have them any longer. My husband wore a gold plaid CPO jacket in high school. Now that's dating him, isn't it? I love those colors, and it's so warm, it's made of wool. My father-in-law also had a collection of CPO jackets. He was a cattle rancher in the Ozarks, a son of the Depression, a World War II navigator, a collector of great wool apparel, obviously. And I love that after he passed and I was going through his closet, I found his boots, you know, his old combat boots and his cowboy boots and his work boots, complete with an appropriate sock tucked into each boot. Now, he left me a gray and blue CPO jacket from the 1970s, and when I wear that, I think of him and I feel close to him. Now, from our eldest son's days as a sophomore in high school, I found an old green barn coat, and of course I like to wear that. 
This was from the days when he parted his hair down the middle and he played goalie. I don't really think of myself as a soccer mom, and I don't know if goalie's parents think of themselves as soccer parents at all, because if your kid's a dang goalie, the whole game hinges on whether he catches the ball or lets it by his two legs. It doesn't matter if the defense was standing on the sideline, picking their noses, or pulling up their socks. What matters is that the guys from the opposing team ran that ball down the field and got it past your kid, and that's your kid's fault. It was great character building for him, but antacid time for me. And now I pop that kid's old jacket on when I head outside to take out the trash or other chores, and I sometimes think about what he looked like when he went off to school wearing that jacket, and and that was about 15 years ago. But my absolute favorite hand-me-down from the guys in my life is a 1987 Toyota truck. Formerly my husband's work truck when he drove 45 miles to a laboratory across the desert at Edwards Air Force Base and 45 miles back every day, and then became our son's college truck, complete with original paint on the cab and that stuff that you paint uh, bed liners with everywhere else because our baby boy and his dad decided it would be a great cover-up and prevent rust, which it does. I love the tough wheels and the four-wheel drive. I don't really like that I have to put down two dang chunks of wood by the tires when I park it because the cable to the emergency brake snapped sometime. But, you know, this is my in-the-woods truck, my haul-the-dog-to-the-vet truck, and my haul-the-deer-to-the-processing-place truck. And I'm sure I'll come up with more uses for it, just in time. What about you? Do you have something handed down to you that makes your life better in some way and belong to someone else and that makes it even more special? We're all about making life better over at womensoutdoornews.com, too. Whether it's shooting or hunting or fishing or just getting outside on a hike wearing an old CPO jacket, we are living our lives to the fullest, and we invite you to come on over and join us. Thank you, Ken. Yeah, you're most welcome, Barbara. Ain't this a show? I mean, this is just some strange stuff, ain't it? I haven't talked about a gun yet, or have I? Well, we had the hunting tips, and Barbara's talking about some hand-me-down stuff. It's about life, though, right? It's not something that's important in our life that we don't even get to. And this show, this show is basically for for friends of mine, for people that get it. Your Warm and Fuzzy Gun Podcast, episode 344. Might not be the most stirring podcast ever, but it's friendly. It takes your mind off of whatever is going on everywhere else. This is where your friends hang out, where the affluent, the grown, and sexy crew work. Folks that are working to make this country great. I'm really appreciative that you're here. I mean, I just can't say that enough. When I look at my Facebook page at Black Man with a Gun 1 or freedomsnetwork.org, you guys, you you just do it for me. I would never have met you if it wasn't for this show. I am so appreciative of that. And then you, you encourage me. Because it's, it's been a tough year. 2013 has been a monster. If I told you all the stuff that has gone wrong, it would make your eyeballs pop out. But I'm hanging because this isn't the end. I'm going to stay in the fight because tomorrow's another day. All right, next up, something cool happened. Longtime Facebook friend, Doc Zavin Zayrung, recently attended that MAG 120 course, and he interviewed Gail Pepin and Ashley Reichert Gibbons, president and general manager of the San Burr Ranch of Rochester, Indiana. And here's the interview, and thanks, David, and welcome to the family, sister Gibbons and it's nice to hear from you again, Sister Gail. Ken, Dave Zarung here. Uh, and uh, I was going to be out at MAG 120 with Masada Yub, And uh, I thought of you with the podcast and thought it would be great fun to put together a little bit of uh, an audio clip for you and your listeners. And I have here with me the uh, predator, Gail Pepin. And I also have Ashley, manager of Sandburg Gun Ranch. 
And uh, I just wanted to spend a couple minutes with them, seeing what their thoughts uh, were about uh, the shooting sports. And uh, maybe, Ashley, I could start with you. What do you do at Sandburr? Well, first of all, I'd like to say hi to Ken. Um, First-time listener, and I hope to become an avid follower. Um, Ashley Gibbons from Sandburr Gun Ranch. I uh, run five shooting ranges and a gun shop full-time, along with my uh, legendary father, Denny Reichard, who does wonderful Smith & Wesson action work. And uh, You talked me into, you didn't try really hard, but you talked me into getting some work done on my 686, and I'm blown away by it. Wonderful. It's excellent. I'm glad you took my advice. It'll serve you well, as well as the gun will for many years to come, and for your family, too. Yeah. Pass it down. Yeah, great. Pass it on. Wonderful stuff. So I interrupted you, but but thank you, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I get interrupted all the time. It's part of my job. <laughs> many hats, many hats here at Sandberg Gun Ranch. Um, yeah, I, I enjoy what I do. Um, I make less money now than I did in 1998, and couldn't be happier. Uh, the sacrifices you do for your commitment to a, a wonderful uh, industry, a wonderful right that we have, and. Uh, Everything I've ever done throughout my life, it always has come back to enjoying the conversations with folks that were gun advocates and uh, collectors and shooters. So. Some of your earliest memories you mentioned were re- related to shooting competitions. Oh, absolutely. Um, there was only one family vacation that was traditional, and it was horrible. Um, I grew up going to Smith & Wesson Armor School with my father uh, while he got certified three different times at uh, Smith & Wesson Armor School. Um, also, Central Lake, Michigan for Second Chance, uh, down into Missouri for the Bianchi Cup, and family vacations were shooting vacations and competitions. That's what we did. Gail, you do some competition work, too. What, what, what do you do? I do a little bit. First, I want to say hi to Ken, my brother from a different mother. Um, and, well, before we go on to that, I want to talk about Ashley, because I've heard stories about Ashley when she, in the stroller at these shooting competitions. <laughs> I was shoved once. My <laughs> stroller was shoved by a, a very, very well-respected shooter. He's got glasses and a goatee now. It's got some gray in it, but it didn't then. He didn't have a goatee then, um, but that was Masada U, but one of the uh, second chance competitions. Uh, it seemed that he was eager to get in either the chow line or find out what his score was, and that was my father's first uh, encounter with Mr. Ayub was... Uh, when my stroller was jolted out of the path of his way. And well, I wasn't, he's better now. I'm not in a stroller. He's, it's, mellowed, he, some. he's mellowed some. And, and you're out of the stroller. And I'm out of a stroller. <laughs> I don't have a child in a stroller for him to shove yet. But that might well, come well I wasn't trying to get to that story. <laughs> I was just trying to point out how long you've been around the shooting sports. Um, I've been around shooting my whole life, um, in all honesty. I I remember having earmuffs and eye protection on behind the line and, and falling asleep <laughs> at matches at Jim Reinholtz. Uh Rest his soul. Um, that was in man. Warsaw? No. North Judson. North Judson. North Indiana. Judson, the legendary Jim Reinhold, won the Sagamore the Wabash for his yeah. uh, endeavors in the Second Amendment for the state of Indiana. And that's the highest honor uh, that's granted to a civilian in the state. So, And that was still while he was alive, yeah. which is an even greater honor <laughs> that they actually passed it on while he was alive. So that's, that's neat stuff. And that's where we are. If I didn't clarify, we are in Indiana. Yes. It's right in the middle. Go um, Hoosiers. North Central Indiana. North Central Indiana. Yep. At corn, wherever you look, let me tell you, there's so much corn here. Maybe a soybean or two. But there is more than corn in Indiana. There's Sandberg on Ranch. <laughs> Can you sing that song? Oh, I could, but I won't. <laughs> we'll leave that to Indiana Beach. Okay. <laughs> now, what did you ask me, Dr. Z-Man? Oh, tell, tell Ken's listeners a little bit about yourself and uh, what uh, shooting sports you do. Oh, I think Ken's listeners know me. I've been on Ken's show a few times, but I, I shoot IDPA for the, new listeners. for the new listeners. He probably has a lot of new listeners. I shoot IDPA. I shoot um, GSSF, which is Glock Shooting Sports Foundation. Um, I help Mass with his mag classes. Um, I beat Carl of the gun dudes on an annual basis. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that gets more and more painful for him each year. And I love every minute of it. 
Um, where can the uh, where can the viewers where can the listeners uh, see uh, pictures of this? On Facebook. Facebook. You guys are on Facebook, and, and what's We're the on website? On Facebook. Um, Facebook. You have to go under my name because we had a Masada Yub Facebook page, but it didn't bring us any traffic value, okay. so I kind of abandoned that. But it's mine, Gail Pepin, on Facebook. Or we have the MAG website, MasadaYubGroup.com. Ashley, what's the website for Sandberg? www.sandburgunranch.com, and you can also find us on Facecrack, I mean Facebook. Now, and Sandburr is S A N D B U R R. Two R's. Gun Ranch. Gun Ranch. Dot com. Excellent. Um, what are your folks' thoughts about uh, women in the shooting sports? We need more. Tons more. We need more women in the shooting sports. We need more women to get involved. We need the sport to be more woman friendly. Um, today I was at a match, and there was probably about eighty people there, and I counted four women. Mm-hmm. And there was two women in my squad: myself and my daughter, who I gave the dark gift to, the dark gift of IDPA. And um, I heard some guys in our squad. They got in a little group. They were talking, and one was saying. Don't ever teach your wife how to shoot because you don't want her coming to matches with you because here's where we can act like guys and guys can be guys. Oh, <laughs> Just, really? Yes, I couldn't that. believe that. He goes, I don't have to be on my best behavior here and I have to be like that at home. You know, that... Mm, that doesn't do anybody any favor. No, that doesn't. I mean, they were nice guys. They weren't, being, weren't acting too animalistic, but, you know, don't have that kind of an attitude. So one message is, is to, oh, Ashley, uh, uh, you, you said something earlier about uh, uh, encouraging the husband to do what? To help it make it easier for their wife to come to the ranch. Uh, one of the best things that I think that, that a good supportive partner can do to encourage their, their females in their lives to, to come out and shoot and learn the shooting sport and, and to learn firearms is to grant them the day to say, I will go ahead and take care of whatever menial task, the the laundry, the dishes, the picking up the kids, the dropping them off. I am here at your disposal for the entirety of the time that you want to devote today to learning firearms or to learn to shoot or to go participate in a match. Um, because females tend to hold our responsibilities to such a high level that we can't let go of what we've already become responsible for. So grant us that time. Say, I will do these things for you and follow up on them, men. Take care of the laundry and the dishes and the kids for that time. It's just as valuable to you to have your mate learn firearms as your spouse and your backup. Your spouse should be your backup in every sense of the word. They should be able to fi- handle the firearms that you handle. And they should not have a fear of protecting themselves and their family, their loved ones. Speaking of fear, I've run into um, a number of women who have had fearful experiences with firearms, um, uh, being the, the butt of, of a joke of uh, uh, a boyfriend or a husband or something who thought it would be uh, good to just have him shoot a gun and, and not shoot it properly. And it became yeah, like those YouTube videos with the girl shooting the forty four Magnum and they don't give any kind of instruction and watch it fly up in the air and hit her in the head and ha-ha, it's so funny. Those men are dicks, yes. and they need to find different men. Pain is not humor. No. no. No, and making fun of somebody is not humor. You know, if you want a woman to learn how to like guns and shoot, teach her how to do it right, give her the right tools, and and she'll like it. You make a joke out of her, she's never going to want to go again. And if you don't know how to help her select properly, be a man and admit to it and ask for somebody that can. Yeah. Now, let's say you meet someone, uh, a woman who has had an experience like that, um, they're curious, but they're fearful. What do you tell them? How do, how do they get over that fear? The fear, the biggest fear is the unknown. Take control of the fear. 
and learn. Educate yourself. Ask questions. Don't pot around about it. If you don't understand it, ask. I recently had a lady in a class who, um, very intelligent, well-educated lady, who we invited to take a class. Um, she came in with the uh, caveat that she was what she called recoil sensitive. So I brought some guns for her to shoot. I brought an MP22. I brought a few different things. Uh, she had a revolver. I brought a 22 caliber revolver, the MP22, and then I brought an assortment of Glocks, a 9mm, because we were going to see how recoil sensitive she was and what this was all about, because I wasn't going to let her get out of that classroom to 22. <laughs> so we started, it, it turned out, her recoil sensitivity was she had a little air weight Smith & Wesson J-frame shooting 38s. Well, yeah, that hurts. I told her, that hurts everybody. Absolutely. Not just women. So I started out with the M&P 22, and she did awesome. By the second day, she was shooting my Glock 19 like nothing, you know, and she ended up shooting the Glock for the rest of the class, and she qualified well above average. So a lot of it is just what... Um, the tools you have to work with, what they're given. You know, nobody told her. Nobody showed her the right way. How can women find folks who are uh, knowledgeable enough to to walk with them in a wise way? That's kind of hard because it, there's not a lot. Um, there's a lot of bad information. There's a lot of bad information, a lot of misinformation out and there. And there's a lot of bully instructors who like to see people fail and don't have the mindset to work and have the patience to educate people in a way that they're not familiar with. They want to teach their way. They fail their students by not paying attention to the student and modifying the way they teach to fit the student and help the student excel. I would probably look for <laughs> a female instructor, if possible. Um, go online, do some research. Um, there's a lot of new female instructors that have sprouted up lately. Be careful. A lot of them don't know even what they don't know. They may be basic NRA personal protection instructors, and that's a good start, good start. but that's just a start. There's so much more. Um, I would consult some of the long-standing reputable female instructors. Um, one thing I recommend every woman I meet and men is the Cornered Cat website, yes. which is corneredcat.com. Kathy Jackson has done excellent work. Um, the work of Gila Hayes, she doesn't mm -hmm. have a website, but she's written some books that are excellent for women's, um, for concealed carry and competition. I, I recommend the Cornered Cat uh to many of my female colleagues who have expressed some interest. Uh, and um, it's, it's excellent. Excellent information. And she is going out and teaching classes now. She started in the last couple of years doing that. Um, be careful. There's some copycat websites out there. You just kind of got to be careful. Watch what you're doing. Um, a Girl in a Gun down in Texas, they have a nice yes. group. Mm -hmm. And they have chapters all over the country. Um, it's very basic, but it's good. And again, it's a good place to start. So it sounds like things have come a good ways over the years uh, in terms of uh, women shooters, but it sounds like there's a good bit farther to go. Yeah. Uh, thank you both for being part of that wave. You know, there's some gimmicky instructors out there, too. If you're, if you're going on the website and you're seeing women shooting in high heels and, you know, an excessive amount of pink on the website and just, you know... Actually, I gave you a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> and just a lot of cutesy stuff, I would say kind of stay away from that. Okay, beware of the pink. Beware of the pink. Okay. Beware the... Be leery of the pink. Yeah, right, because Kathy Jackson's website, Corner Cat, has a lot of pink on it. And, and that's and, okay. And she can justify the pink on hers. Absolutely. But I'm just saying, all that Barbie doll crap, stay away from that. Yeah. Look for more than the pink. More than the pink. There you go. If the instructor has exceptionally long nails, that's probably not 
a very applicable instructor. <laughs> because of operating fire. Yeah, if, 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 they, if they don't look like they have the hands of an operator, they probably aren't. Yeah, look at these nails. I'm putting mine right by the microphone so you can see them. Oh, I know. They're awful. <laughs> they're big. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're manicure, not. Manicure, <laughs> manicure. Catch out on the podcast. <laughs> Speaking of podcasts, uh, there's the Pro Arms podcast that comes out sometimes. Sporadically. <laughs> so you can find that in iTunes and probably other places. iTunes and all the usual places, um, Zoom Marketplace, um, Stitcher, all the usual places. I can't remember all the places. And I promise I will have some out sometime soon. <laughs> we enjoy it every I'm time. I'm trying. You, you do. You have a lot going on. Any, any parting words for Ken's listeners? When it comes to female uh, students or females that are interested in firearms be patient be kind let them ask all the questions they want to ask and try and answer them as honestly as you can and if you don't know the answer tell them you don't know and help them find the proper source be genuine absolutely Mm -hmm. don't hit on the students yeah that's that's, usually doesn't oh you mean you're not supposed to do that i forgot hmm (laughs) Well, well, just kidding <laughs> Ken we love you brother uh, thanks for all the wonderful work that you do and uh, uh, this is Dave Zerun uh, signing out Gail and Ashley thanks for participating tonight it's been a long week and uh, we appreciate I know you guys are both exhausted and uh, thanks for taking a few minutes out no problem appreciate it thank you pro thanks. arms out nice to meet you Ken nice to meet you too You know, everybody hears what you say. Friends listen to what you say, but best friends listen to what you don't say. It was great for David to do that. And if you are going somewhere really cool and you can throw a microphone in somebody's face, you want to be a part of the Black Man with a Gun show, you are most welcome because you're family. Again, thanks, David, and good job, man. This portion of the show has been sponsored by ErgoGrips.net. Small arms accessories built for high performance and control. Shooter focused. Ergogrips.net. And now for something completely different. I want to give a quick shout out to Daniel Shaw of the Gunfighter cast who successfully moved he and his family out to Wichita. He's now working for Thunderbird Tactical, according to Facebook, and uh, has his own training uh, company, Paratus Academy. Congrats, brother, and uh, wish you the best with that. Shout out to uh, Rob Morse, who is now a member of Politics and Guns podcast. If you're looking to get the Maryland Qualification License, there's a class um, this Saturday, October 19th, at AnnapolisDefense.com. And if you listen to this after the 19th, check out AnnapolisDefense.com for future courses. And another thing that's not related to anything, but brothers, in the next couple of days, could you grab your your wife and dance with her? I don't care if it's on a kitchen linoleum. She'll appreciate it. Hopefully you can dance, but whatever you took to get her, remind her of it this week. And sisters, if you're looking for a husband, Look for somebody who can dance. Not quite sure why, but I just know it helps. This is from your pastor of Patriots, Pistoleros, and Paladins, trying to keep you happy and living longer. Hi, this is Reverend Ken Blanchard, and I want to invite you to join us at the Unnamed Church Podcast. It comes out every day, Monday through Friday, a little inspiration a message to help you in your walk with Christ. It is a part of the BlanchardChapel.us. Come join us, won't you? All right, your soup is ready. The stew is done, and it smells oh so good. Got a little rotisserie chicken in here. Got some potatoes in here. Got some carrots in here. I got a little rice in here. There's a whole bunch of seasoning. And this is a fix you up, whatever ails you. 
like the show. It's a mulligan stew. It's a hobo hodgepodge of a, just threw a whole bunch of stuff together. Just like America, just a hodgepodge of us that all believe in freedom, all believe in our right to keep and bear arms. We're all from different backgrounds. We don't look the same, but we're Americans. And it's a beautiful thing. Hey, thinking about suicide? I'm here to tell you that you're not alone. If you need some help in the U.S., please call 1-800-273-8255. That's the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Suicidepreventionlifeline.org. 1-800-273-8255. You are not alone. All right, remember, if you are in the state of Maryland, please go to gunrightsmaryland.com and sign up. I'm trying to get 10,000 people on that list. I know there's at least 10,000 of us in the state of Maryland that are gun owners. I'm trying to get you all down there. Thank you to Barbara for her thoughts on the hand me downs. Appreciate you, Doc David Zerong, for the good interview with Gail and Ashley. Ashley, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Her, her range is called SandburGunRanch.com. You can find it there. Barbara can be found at Women'sOutdoorNews.com. Herschel and the DC Cover Scent is at DCCoverScent.com. The Mulligan Soup is smelling real good, and it's just for you. Thank you for listening to the show. Also, check out the book by Jim Heffelfinger author of Deer of the Southwest. You'll find that book at DeerNet.com. I think that's about all I got for you today. And all I can say is that I love you. And it's not a darn thing you can do about it. All right, I got to keep an eye out. I got a guy that was fixing something upstairs, and he's almost done. And I should be, he should be, oh, there he is right there. Hey, 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 right here, right here. Hey, man, you finished? See? Could you find everything? See? Is it dry? See? Man, what's your name anyway? I didn't catch it. Sigh. <laughs> Did you say sigh? See? Oh, okay. That's what I thought. Uh, the phone rang while you were in the back. And I didn't catch the lady's name. You know who it was? Sue. Yeah, yeah, that was that's who it was. All right, cool. Hey, I got a quick question for you. Did you vote in the last election? See. What party did you vote um, in? Libertarian. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> well, that's it for this week. Thanks for rolling with a brother. If you want to contact me, my voicemail is 888-675-0202. My email is blackmanwithagun at gmail.com. The show notes and all media links can be found on blackmanwithagun.com. Check out the affiliates, the blog, and sign up on the contact list that I have there. If you like what you heard, please tell somebody. And until we meet again, shalom, baby. And though I didn't mention it earlier, Financial contributions are welcome. If you can help a brother out, there is a donation link at blackmanwithagun.com. If you want to share this show with somebody, all you have to do is point them to blackmanwithagunshow.us. And there's an RSS feed. It will take them right to the link. They won't have to do pretty much anything else. If there's a RSS reader on their phone or on their computer, it should come up. might be iTunes. It could be Stitcher. Just depends on what they have. Thanks a lot. Talk to you soon.